this occasion, for my sila, I'm going to speak from Psalm 46, and I intend now to read to you the first seven verses. God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth give way, and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, and the mountains quake with their surging Selah. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her, she will not fall. God will help her at break of day. Nations are in uproar, kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice, the earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Selah. The line I want to quote on is this one. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God. Now that's an amazing thing to say about Jerusalem. In ancient times when a people were looking to build a city, a number of considerations were important. Is it a position that can be defended in time of war? What about communication links, train routes, etc.? But at the very top of the list was one basic requirement is their water. No matter what else a city might have or not have, no city can survive without an adequate water supply. For this reason, most ancient cities were founded beside rivers. Babylon on the Euphrates, Thebes on the Nile, Rome on the Tiber, and our own London on the Thames. Jerusalem was an exception not being on a river. The Kidron Brook was nearby but was hardly a river and it was outside the city. This made Jerusalem vulnerable in times of siege during a war. To get around the problem, a secure water supply, various cisterns and pools were made for water storage. And we read that Hezekiah constructed a pool and a tunnel by which he brought water into the city. Yet the psalmist says there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God. Clearly the writer who knows the situation well is thinking in spiritual terms. There is a river. Jerusalem, the city of God, is not without its river. Her river is greater far than any natural waterway. Her river is in God himself, the Holy Spirit. So, some considerations about the river. First of all, it's a river of peace. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God. So then, outside the earth quakes, the sea roars and foams, even the mountains are moved, but the city of God, in the city of God, the river of peace flows undisturbed. Therefore, we will not fear. The old hymn puts it like this. Like a river, glorious is God's perfect peace. Over all, victorious in its bright increase. Perfect, yet it floweth fuller every day. Perfect, yet it groweth deeper all the way. Stayed upon Jehovah, hearts are fully blessed. Finding, as he promised, perfect peace and rest. Now, the peace of God may pass understanding but you can still experience what you are at a loss to describe or to understand. Rivers flow to us and then away from us, on and beyond. The sure mercies of God flow to us every day unceasingly. As we cast our burden on the Lord, it's like throwing it into a river to be carried away resolutely, on and beyond and away, out of reach. But the mercies, the peace, the blessing of the Lord, they just keep coming. Number two, this river comes in streams. A mighty river? Yes. Unstoppable? Yes. Unapproachable? No. A stream could be described in modern parlance as user-friendly. Less intimidating than the river in its fullness. Furthermore, streams can be dispersed and channeled to particular needs. The word used here for streams is the word used for a small channel of water, as in irrigation. How wonderful! All that God is, is available to us, flowing to us, yet God 
apportions himself to our need. He accommodates our frailties, comes down to where we are, and in such a way as to bless and to heal, rather than to overwhelm and destroy. And supremely, this is God in Christ. All the fullness of the Godhead, bodily in Christ a man, one of us for us. Jesus said to Philip, he that has seen me has seen the Father. Through Christ, God streams to us. The love of God, his wisdom, his power, streaming through the Lord Jesus. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, bringing Christ's freshness into your daily experience. The stream is there. Take advantage of the privilege. And then thirdly, this river makes glad. I'm sure you've heard the expression, a miserable sinner. In actual fact, sin can be enjoyable at the time. Who wouldn't sin? Who would sin, I should say, if it didn't appear attractive? But sin carries a penalty. Ultimately, doing our own thing doesn't deliver the reward it promises. A life of self-pleasing eventually leaves one cynical and miserable. By contrast, there should not be such a person as a miserable Christian. Psalm 84, 6 says that even when passing through the valley of Bacar, that word meant weeping, they make it a place of springs. Bacar was a dry, arid place. The pilgrims passing through caused that to change. The Christian is enabled to make even his surrounding circumstances take on a new perspective. He changes his surroundings more than they change him. There is a river and he's drawing from it and this river makes the city glad the community of God's people. And this gladness is the joy of thankful hearts. I love to be among thankful people. I do grumble myself at times, and I know I shouldn't, but isn't it good to be among people who are praising God from the heart, people with an awareness of what God's done for them? Well, where the river of God is flowing, grousing gives way to praise, depression gives way to joy, and despair gives way to hope. And finally, this gladness is the joy of divine security. God is within her, she will not fall. God will help her at break of day. Nations are in uproar, kingdoms fall. That describes the international scene today. But in God's city, she will not fall. God will keep her at break of day. Happy the people whose God is the Lord. We have the promise of Jesus never to leave us or forsake us. Paul reminds us that in everything God works for the good of those who love him and have been called according to his purpose. So there's a river. Praise God. Amen. Ezekiel saw in vision this river flowing out from the temple. John pictured the same river of life in Revelation 22. This is the living water that Jesus invited the Samaritan woman at the well to ask for and to drink. Jesus said to her in John 4.13, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks of the water that I give will become, uh, that I give him, will become in him, the water that I give him, let's get it right, the water that I give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her, she will not fall, God will help her at the break of day. There is a river, a river of peace. There is a river, it's a river of streams, God coming gently to us to meet our need. There is a river, it's a river that makes us glad. Gladness of thankful hearts, the gladness of God's presence, the gladness of divine security. Of all people, we are most blessed. Praise God. Amen. Amen.